Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. I'm going to be doing a lot of squinting. Uh, apologies sort of for not bothering to put on any makeup because I don't care anymore. I'm outside today because despite the sun, it's just, it feels a little bit cooler than being inside the office with the computer running and the fan off. Um, so today you get to see this lemongrass, which has really taken off in the last year. Um, and today our video is my seven month bump date. I don't know about you, I bet time feels like it's going fast for you, but for me, it's like, I cannot believe it's already seven months of this pregnancy. Um, I mean, at the same time, I am starting to sort of feel a little bit of like anxiety, or not anxiety, but like, let's, let's you know, move it on a little anxious to, to have a baby here already. And we will get into all of that um, throughout this video. So first off, I am 30 weeks right now. The <sighs> apps or whatever say that baby is the size of a cabbage if you watched last month's video uh baby was the size of a cabbage last last month so i don't really know what to tell you um apparently data wise she's about four pounds and about 15 and a half inches roughly um so that'll give you an idea and i think that makes a lot more sense uh just to think of it in terms of the size of an actual baby instead of a vegetable by now especially since you can just look at photos of preemies to get an idea according to my update emails um she should be able to see light now so if i were to flash like a flashlight she might be able to react to that i haven't tested it yet that never really worked with agnes so we'll see um and she is hiccuping and i only noticed it for the very first time yesterday i've been waiting for that because it was something i got a lot with my older daughter and uh, yeah so i've been looking forward to sort of feeling that and recognizing what it is it'll get annoying soon enough uh we seem to have a theme here my weight gain since the beginning of the pregnancy is around 18 pounds which is what it was last month. I've gained less than a pound since last month, but in that time, I fluctuated up and down a couple of times. So I feel like that's something I probably wouldn't have noticed um, with my last pregnancy because this pregnancy, I am actually weighing myself once a week. So I'm able to see those variations and a lot of them are just attributed to things like whether I chose to take off my pants before weighing myself or not. Um, maybe if I had a big meal the night before, you know, if I've pooped recently, stuff like that, I think is really affecting um, those readings because I've been way up at the very top of where my weight gain should be and then way down back to the bottom. Uh, but the last month's bump date, I was like at the very top of the growth chart. Um, and now I'm more towards the middle. So, you know, I've, I've basically evened out over the course of all those dips and peaks. My cravings for this month have been something I finally, finally bit the bullet and went ahead and ordered with our groceries. With my last um, maternity leave with my first pregnancy, I was really into Klondike bars, specifically the mint chocolate chip ones, but really it's like that chocolate crunch and the ice cream. It's the hot weather. Um, now that our older daughter is with the babysitter during the week, the week and I am working from home, so I'm by myself here at home a lot, which is kind of nice for a change because I can spend my breaks doing little projects and stuff. But also it's starting to feel a little bit almost like maternity leave has started even though it hasn't yet. Um, and so I was craving those as <laughs> sort of a, a memory thing from last time. So I went ahead and ordered those, had my first one yesterday and they are so good. So as far as symptoms go, um, I've been just feeling a lot bigger. <laughs> Every month I feel bigger and bigger. I'm starting to get like out of breath just from standing up. And that can be tough when you've got a little toddler who wants you down on the floor playing with her and, um, you know, wants me to, to practice jumping with her and all of this. So I have to kind of sometimes tell her, sorry, mommy is just too tired right now. I can't jump with you or get up and down. I have to stay up here on the couch. Um, I've had a lot more SPD pain coming, coming and going, but coming more frequently and a little bit more severely. Fortunately, it still has not gotten as bad as it did with my first pregnancy. And I do attribute that a lot to continuing to stay active throughout this one. I've been doing Mama Strong, which I did a whole video about up there. And um, just exercising, staying active, moving around, doing some of the, the fix me videos that like do stretches and release work to try to fix those problems as they come up um, has been helpful to make it manageable, but it's still annoying. 
I still do get a lot of round leg pain if I'm trying to get up and down, rolling over in bed. <laughs> it makes me gasp in pain a lot. So it's just, you know, that's just what life is like in the third trimester. Um, I had forgotten, you know, I think as you do exactly how annoying that can be to just not feel like you have your body that it's, you know, working against you. But that's, that's where we are right now, seven months pregnant. I also find that I get kind of lightheaded or like a blood rush when I um, lean down or squat down. If I'm squatting for more than maybe 30 seconds, it starts to get really uncomfortable in my head, especially if I'm leaning down with my head down. Um, it's just, yeah, blood flow stuff, I guess. So this last month, I've been up to a lot of prepping the house. I've been doing some nesting in the form of reorganizing spaces around the house. I've reorganized like our utensil drawer and like the toy cupboard and our closet and the cabinets in the, the bathroom and little things that like I have done some organization of but it's gotten messy again and so it feels really good to have those done even though obviously it's nothing to do with the baby. Um, I am hoping to pull out her newborn clothes and her newborn cloth diapers and get all of those organized into the drawers very soon um, but I have to find those in the garage. <laughs> Like I said, uh, Agnes has been at the babysitter and I've had the house to myself, so it's been kind of nice that I've been able to do things like reorganize her toy shelf in the living room without her coming in and messing it up. Um, so she'll make the messes over the weekend, but then I can kind of get it back to a place where I feel happy to look at it um, and relax when I'm looking at it instead of just stressed about all of the clutter. Um, so that is one thing that I am a little bit concerned going into maternity leave, whether I will be able to like stay mentally calm if there's mess around me so I think we're going to focus a lot on teaching Agnes how to tidy up like I said I've been trying to listen to my body and not overexert myself um, saying no to Agnes when I need to saying no to cleaning things and just focusing on getting some rest um, you know taking a nap if I need to I had you know some insomnia occasionally like this Monday it was the first time in a while actually I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning, couldn't get back to sleep, so I decided to get up and do some reorganization of the toy closet in the hallway. And then I made sure to get a nap in that day because I knew that I was going to need it. I've also, I think, just been a little bit more in tune with the way my body has been progressing just because I've been doing those weekly check-ins. I weigh myself, I take my blood pressure once a week, and then daily I'm trying to do the kick counts that the doctor is recommending. She just wants uh, me to feel 10 movements within one hour, which is a wide enough um, spectrum of like available. It's not that difficult. Um, when she is particularly squirmy, I can get those 10 movements in five minutes. So I don't really usually sit down and count um, because I don't usually need to. I just, I'm trying to be more aware of when she's moving, when she's wiggly and just sort of be present with that and experience it and kind of keep roughly track uh, just to make sure that nothing feels like she's slowing down. Um, and if she did feel like she was slowing down, I would I'd make a point of, you know, drinking some cold water, eating some Skittles and lying down for a while. Um, but so far that hasn't been necessary. Last week was pretty tough for us or for me. Um, my husband found out on Monday of this last week that he had been exposed to a coworker at work who tested positive for COVID. He hadn't seen his coworker in like nine days at this point so maybe even more than that it only ended up being like two and a half days of isolation before he got his negative result and we were happy that it had been 14 days since he'd seen the co-worker but those two and a half days of isolation or three days or whatever it was we had the baby back at home with me uh, I was working from home full-time taking care of a toddler full-time and watching PBS kids full-time um, and it was a lot and I knew that like as soon as he got his result back he was had taken that whole day off to go get tested so he wasn't working so when he came home he was able to take a shift watching Agnes and as soon as he was on the clock my body was just like okay <laughs> we're out of um, the, the adrenaline mode <laughs> you're gonna go lay down and I almost fell asleep on the couch right then and there. I didn't realize how much I had just been running on pure adrenaline for the last few days. Um, but I managed to thrive and get through it and kept everything tidy, kept the baby entertained and 
stimulated as much as possible <laughs> um, and the house did not look terrible so I was pretty proud of myself but I really hope that that doesn't happen again but you know it probably will knowing the way the world is I feel like that's not going to be our first um, exposure scare so at least this time it was only three days and I'm just praying that I'll be able to get through a 14 day one if that happens so looking ahead to the next month, uh, my next appointment is later this month and we're going to be doing the group B strep test, which is a little area swab to check for a bacteria that, I don't know, you can look up group B strep if you're concerned or anything, but I don't think it actually affects adults, but they don't want babies to catch it. So if I were positive, they would put me on antibiotics during labor. That's why they check. Um, but that is also why I have to go into the office again for that one. I am hoping but I don't know, but I'm hoping that I can ask the doctor um, if we can do a lot of the appointments in the last month while I'm on maternity leave, uh, if we can do those as phone appointments, because I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but we're hoping to be able to self-isolate quite a lot um, from 26 weeks on so that we can pretty well confirm that I'm not gonna catch COVID and test positive when we go into the hospital, which would just complicate matters a lot. I think, um, I've heard a lot of horror stories about babies being separated from their moms and I don't know yet what our policies are. So these are all things that I'm going to be talking with my doctor about, um, about what kinds of standards they have in place right now and hopefully those will inform the kinds of decisions we can make looking forward to September. Um, but the fewer people we interact with between 26 and 28 and on weeks, I think the better. So hopefully we won't have to... Uh, I won't have to go in to the doctor too often from that time so that when they, I'm not exposed to whoever's at the doctor's office and that my toddler isn't exposed to whoever would be watching her while I'm there. So that's the hope. Um, I think it's mostly like checking for preeclampsia, listening for a heartbeat. I don't know if it's worth getting a Doppler. Anyway, those are all the concerns I'm thinking about right now. Looking forward to that quarantine period. We're trying to knock out a lot of the errands we have to run now before that kicks in. So um, my mother-in-law is gonna be turning 60 during that period. So we wanna throw her something, some sort of celebration before we go into hiding. Um, I need to smog my car. I need to go to the dentist and get a filling fixed because that's gonna be annoying. Um, my husband really needs to get his hair cut before we go into quarantine so that he can see the new baby when she comes. And then the last thing we're gonna be doing this next month is uh, shopping. I've been really putting it off. Um, I made that registry list months ago, so I've already gotten stuff picked out pretty much. I have an idea of which of the things on there I really wanna get for ourselves. Um, is like priority items and um, now that we're getting closer I think it's time to actually start making some of those purchases so the very first of those we actually I think have found a pretty good deal on the stroller that we want um, on Facebook marketplace so I'm sending my husband there this evening to go check that out we might get a, a good deal on a brand new one or an almost new one if you guys are interested in like a, a haul video setup video or reviews of any of the products that you saw listed in our registry where I did a whole rundown of what was on that registry, um, then let me know and I can make sure to film those videos as we go forward in the next couple of months before I clock out and just start phoning in these videos that I'm doing. Um, I will be talking about, um, in upcoming videos, I'll be talking about what my plans are for the channel, what kind of content you can expect to see around the time I'm giving birth so that, you know, I'm still planning to have two videos a week. They might be a little bit different, but stay tuned for all of that. And the next time you see one of these bump date videos, it's going to be around the beginning of my maternity leave. So look forward to that. And I will see you in the next video on Thursday. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you then. Bye.